Hey everybody, it's your old pal Larry back from Monster Movie App with a little movie slash video review for you. Today we're going to dig into Automation from writer-director Garo Setian and Epic Pictures. Now a little dirty synopsis on this. Automation follows a warehouse robot as he establishes relationships with his co-workers. At the same time, coming to terms with the fact that he may be replaced with a newer model robot. Uh, now, Epic Pictures sent me a Blu-ray of this, so we're going to dig into that, too. Here's the Blu-ray itself. I'll show you what I got. Cool artwork. I like the artwork on this. There's the back. And the disc itself has the same artwork. On top of that, got a little uh, little card, little mini movie poster there. And in keeping with Epic Pictures releases, they sent me a letter from, uh, from the director, a short note from the director talking about the film. Cool. What else is on there? Well, let's take a look at the audio. So you got uh, 5.1 surround sound as well as stereo. Two commentary tracks for all you commentary fans out there. Um, one has the uh, producer, writer, director, Garo Setian, and writer Rolf Konevsky. That flows off the tongue. And then uh, the second commentary track uh, with producer, this Garo Setian, do I have to say it again? Uh, Anna Hit Setian and producer Dan Bowen. So two commentary tracks. Nice. Also English and Spanish subtitles. Special features wise. Fucking loaded. Epic Pictures. They're on the up and coming, everybody. Look out for Epic Pictures for sure. Uh, so you got deleted scenes. Uh, a lot of these are pretty short though. This is uh, 348, 3 minutes 48 seconds. With optional commentary for you commentary spankers out there. Uh, alternate takes also with, I'm not going to do it again. Alternate uh, optional commentary. Uh, that's only 2 minutes and 35 seconds. Bloopers, 5 minutes, 35 seconds. Now the behind the scenes. Here we go. We're getting into the meat. Uh, 29 minutes and 6 seconds long for the behind the scenes. Writing the screenplay, that one's 12 minutes and 29 seconds. They're getting bigger. Uh, building Auto with Evil Ted, that's 9 minutes and 13 seconds. And Auto's Voice, the interview with voiceover actor Jim Tasker, 11 minutes and 16 seconds. So fucking beyond meaty as far as uh, special features go. And we're not done because there's more. Uh, these are all fucking interviews. So you get all these interviews. Uh, do I need to read them all? I'm pretty sure you can read them all. But we're going to go through. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go through anyway. The interview with uh, the director, 9 minutes and 17 minutes long. Interview with the producer, that's uh, 15 minutes, 43 seconds. Uh, Evil Ted interview, that is 16 minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, we got uh, another producer, Goodstein. That is, uh, where is that? That is six minutes and nine seconds long, Larry, if we could get that out. Sarah French, an interview with her. That is seven minutes and 30 seconds. You have an interview with Matthew L. Schaefer, writer. Oh, we skipped Rolf. Rolf's interview is four minutes and 30, 37 seconds. Then we have Matt Schaefer, nine minutes, and Joel Christensen Goffin, that is six minutes and 29 seconds, loaded. On top of that, behind me, which was not good placement for Larry's old big fat Irish melon, uh, you got uh, the trailer and the commentaries at the bottom, that's I already showed you, so uh, you can enjoy all of that if you buy this now. Now, uh, as far as the movie goes, uh, it's actually a really charming and compelling storyline. I know looking at the cover, you would not fucking think that. But uh, the storyline's totally in keeping 
with uh, the old classic monster films and those storylines where uh, the writers cre- created like a, a sympathetic character that the audience identifies with and feels sorry for. Um, since the beginning, the creation of horror cinema, that's been going on and it still fucking works to this day. Um, now this is, uh, this film I would say is equal parts indie genius and indie crap. It's a fucking, there's a, there's a duality going on in this film. Um, like the robot design looks really cool and parts of it look awesome, but at the same time, you can see it's foam rubber fucking folding and bending as it fucking moves. So, you know, that's not good in 2019 as far as special effects go. I guess it's charming in the fact that it's a throw, it looks throwback. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but uh, most people won't see it that way. They'll just see it as fucking cheap. Um, on with the duality. The story is well written, uh, extremely interesting. Tugs at your heartstrings a little bit, but uh, there's plot holes. Like, uh, like one major one that I can think of, where you're like, "What the fuck just happened there? That doesn't make any sense." Um, the acting is decent, but at the same time, fucking shitty. Uh, the duality continues. Um, even the same actor or actress uh, that's been pretty consistently good. Uh, we'll have a scene where it's just like, wow, that's terrible. And then there's like, I can think of one dude that's just fucking awful. I don't know what the fuck was going on with the cast scene there, but like drags the film down. I won't call him out this time. Maybe his next film. Um, so, uh, one constant though. There's no duality about this. The CGI is fucking awful. The CGI effects are terrible. Like... 1990s Charles Band full moon production bad just takes you out takes you out of the film like CGI does every fucking time now that being said halfway through the film man I was fucking on board I wasn't enjoying it I was like this is a fucking indie gem um you know like I'm feeling it I was feeling it but then as the film keeps rolling on like the flaws keep piling up and uh, by the end you're just kind of like, you know, this dude, this, uh, this dude, uh, Garo Setian is super, clearly super talented. Can't wait for his future projects. He's clearly like innovative uh, and knows his shit. I would love to see what he does with a bigger budget, but uh, unfortunately that was not this production. So, uh, let's get to my final review. If we could, uh, the burning question, would I recommend that you watch it? Obviously, that's a big fuck yes. Um, it is enjoyable, especially if you like, uh, you know, like, like slightly polished, but like still kind of like nutty, like pieces of nut and corn in your turd. Uh, but like aspects of it are like, high gloss but you can still see the nuts in the corn um if you're that type of person you'll fucking love this uh would i buy it uh obviously that's a big fuck no uh i saw it once uh i'm not gonna sell it though so you know like it does have some fucking charm it's just on the edge if there was like just a couple fucking things less about it i would i would have said buy it but uh I already said it. It threw me over the edge with too many flaws. Well, hey, everybody, that's my review, and I'm sticking by it. Until I see all of you motherfuckers again next time, as always, get the fuck out of my house. Bye.